Hello everyone. I welcome you all for today's session on digital system design using Verilog for third semester. Today we are going to cover fifth module, lecture one. Before going into detail, I request all of you to share this video with your friends for the benefits. First, let us see the content present in this topic. So in this particular module, we are going to cover Verilog behavioral description. First, we'll understand the structure, variable assignment statements, sequential statements, then we have loop statements, and description of multiplexer with an example of 2 is to 1 marks, 4 is to 1 marks, 8 is to 1 marks. Then we'll cover Verilog structural description, the highlight of structural description, organization structure of structural description, and structural description of ripple carry adder as an example. First, let us see the structure of behavioral description. So behavioral description model models the system as how the output behaves with the input. Usually a flowchart is used to show this behavior. So as we have seen the writing of the program, we have different types of programs in styles there. That is data flow, behavioral, structural, mixed type like this. As we already seen in the previous session about data flow. So now we are going to cover about behavioral description. So how the output behave with respect to the input this particular concept is used to write the structure of behavioral description there. To write the behavioral description, we have to use always block. So always is the very log behavioral statement. So all the very log statement inside the always block are treated as concurrent. So any output used inside the always block should be declared as a register there. So before using it, as an output inside always block, we have to write declare the output as register. So let us see a simple example with half adder. So half adder, as we know, has four IO pins. That is two inputs, two outputs. I1, I2, O1, O2. Okay. So I1 and I2 are declared as input. O1 and O2 are declared as output. Now, since O1 and O2 are used inside this always block, so we have declared this one as registers there. So any sensing signal, so sensing means what? Any changes that is happening in the input. Now, there are two signals, I1 and I2, are the sensing signals. So we are declaring it as a always. Always at I1, comma I2. It means any changes happening at I1, I2 should affect the output there. That's the meaning of this always block. Since there are more than one statement, it is a rule in Verilog that we have to use begin and end. So this particular declaration is the delay statement here. As we know, we are writing the program for the half adder. So the I1 XOR with I2. So any changes happening in the I1 get affected to the output O1 only after 10 nanoseconds. Same way, I1 I did with I2 should affect the output changes only after 10 nanoseconds. So this is the meaning of this particular declaration, what we are declaring the always block. Now let us see the waveforms to analyze this particular program, what we are written here. So if you observe the waveforms, I1 is low for certain duration and goes to the one. I2 is always zero there. Now here there is a change over happening in the input I1. So at this particular instant, if you observe the arrow mark here, dotted mark, Change is happening. And what is the function there? O1. O1 has to change immediately. But because of the declaration of 10 nanoseconds, it is changing after 10 nanoseconds. So that is a change. So 0, 0. So it is changing to 1. Now XOR 0, 1. The output is 1. So what is happening? It... Whereas O2, there is no change because Anything I ended with zero is always zero, so O2 is always zero. So this is how the behavioral program of a very log works there. Okay. So next, let us understand about sequential statement. So there are several statements associated with the behavioral descriptions, and these statements have to appear inside always or an initial block. Okay. So let us see some of the sequential statements what we have here. So first example of sequential statement is about if statement. So if you see the if statement is a sequential statement that is present inside always or an initial block in the very log, as you can see in the program written here. So we are using this 
if block and else if block inside the always statement. So the execution of this if statement is controlled by the Boolean expression written inside the if statement. Okay. And if the Boolean statement is true, the statement one, two, three will be executed. If the statement in the Boolean expression is false, statement A, B, C is executed. That's what, what we have written it here. So if Boolean expression execute this particular statement, if not execute the else statement there. So this is about if statement. Let us see here some simple example. Example, if clock is equal to one tick P1, it means if clock is one, statement S1 should be executed. That is S1 is assigned to the temporary. Same way, what happens in the else statement is whatever the value of S2 is there, it goes to the temporary statement. Okay, so if it is one, S1 is executed. If it is zero, S2 is executed. Now let us see it as working as a latch. So if you observe, if clock is equal to one, so what happens here? S1 is assigned to the temp. What about the other? We are not assigned. So in the latch, what happens? Only in the level triggering, this particular statement work. Okay. So if clock is equal to one, this is a level trigger. That's why we declare this particular statement as latch. So if clock is high, the value of S1 is assigned to the temporary. So if clock is not high, temp retain its original, that is a previous value, current value, thus simulating it as a latch. Similarly, we have if as else if statement. So if there are more conditions or sequential condition has to be checked, then we can use if as else if statement. So what happens here is if the Boolean expression is true, this particular statement 192 is executed. If not, then it checks for another statement. If the Boolean expression 2 is correct, then it executes the statement i and double i there. If both the statements are wrong, then it goes for else. That is statement A and B are executed. Let us see the example of if else if statement there. You can see the table what we have here. Now, the first condition here, we are going to check about signal 1. So signal 1 is 1. Then the output is 1. You can observe here. If signal 1 is 0 and signal 2 is 1, the output statement is yes 2. If both the statements are wrong, that is signal 1 is 0 as well as signal 2 is 0, then S3 is executed. That is S3 is assigned to the temporary variable there. Okay. And let us see a simple example of D latch. As we can see here, since it's a D latch, we are using D as an input, E as enable, Q and Q bar as an output. Okay. So sensing signals are D and E. Now, if enable is one, then D is assigned to Q. And Q is not of QB. Okay. And if enable is not one, if enable is not one, then what? It has to maintain the state there. Okay. So what is happening? And assign Q bar is equal to Q not. So what is happening? It should be a not of that one. So let us see the execution of this particular D latch in the waveforms. So you can see the inputs of a D signal as the clock and enable is one for certain duration off for certain duration. And you can observe during enable, what is happening? Sorry. During enable, whatever D is there that is passed and Q is becoming Q bar there. Okay. Whereas when enable is zero, whatever the previous state was there, so previous state was zero, it is just meant and Q bar is opposite of that. So whenever is enable, Q is passed. That is whatever D is there, that is passed. Enable is zero, previous state is maintained. So this is how we are written the very log code for the D latch. And you observe. So we have declared Q and QB as output. So register Q is used here. 
okay now let us see the program for a multiplexer so multiplexer we know it is having two input one output and one select line two input one output and one select line and one enable signal what we have here okay so now if you see the functionality of this what we have written is if g bar is equal to one output is high impedance else it depends upon the select line if select line is one output is b if select line is zero output is a you can observe input a b select line g bar input y as output y is register so high impedance else it is working it is working as a multiplexer there okay so with if else statement how it is working we can see the waveforms so module marks as behavioral so a b select line g bar y same statement what you read there with the help of waveforms we are analyzing it so if g bar is zero and select line is one output is b okay if g bar is zero and select line is also zero then the output is a else it is high impedance as we have written in the previous program there of how to use always block now let us analyze this particular program in this particular waveform there so when both g bar is zero and select line is one we have here we have to just check it out so initially a initially a is one b is zero select line is zero g bar is zero when g bar is zero and select line is zero output is a so whatever a is there it is passing okay still now a has changed it has also changed but in this particular state select line has become one so output is b so b output when both are one one so the other condition it is high impedance so we got it as high impedance so this is how we are using always block to write the program with the help of if else statement similarly to the if else we can replace the if else statement with the help of case statement there so the case statement is another sequential control statement and the format for this one to write is case control expressions or the conditions what we have so if it is satisfying the test value as one then this particular statement one is executed if not it checks for the test value two if it is satisfied it executes statement two if it is not satisfying goes for the test three there is a test value three and execute the statement three if none of these statements are true then it goes for the default because it has verified all the possible combinations so remaining combination is the de default combination which executes the default statement so this is how the format of case statement is so default verilog can be used to guarantee that all the conditions are covered okay so that's the meaning of this particular default what we have and you as well as saying if there are more than one statement we use begin and end if it not it's not necessary to use so the begin and end are not needed if verilog is only a single statement okay now let us see a simple example of case statement so when case is select line 0 0 i1 is executed 0 1 i2 is executed 1 0 i3 is executed and last case is i4 so this is the case statement example now let us implement that with the help of flip flop statement so we have taken here as jk flip flop j and k are two inputs clock as a triggering signal q and q bar are output there so what happens here is we have declared q and q bar as register inside always block so during positive edge of the clock you can observe during positive edge of the clocks changes should happen so if j and k is zero q is maintained its original value that is the previous value if t is one that is jk is one output is zero and jk is one out, uh, output is one and jk is one one the output is toggling there so we can see here first we are checking for the zero one case that is when d is one so what is happening when d is one q should be always zero so during positive wedge whatever may be the value of j and k it's not whatever sorry 
when j and k is 0 1 output is 0 we can observe here when in this case the rising edge the value of jk is 1 0 so what happens when it is 1 0 q is 1 so it is going for q is 1 when both the inputs are 0 0 when j in k are 0 0 it is maintaining the previous value so previous value was 1 so it is maintaining now in this particular state it is 1 1 what is happening it becomes toggling that is previously it was 1 it went to 0 during next rising edge since it was previous value of q was 0 it goes to the 1 so this is how we write the flip-flop program with the help of a case statement there okay this is the functionality what we are verifying for the jk flip-flop with the help of case statement similarly we can write the counter program there so counter is what just an increment function what we have so we can observe that clear means what make it to the ideal conditions all as zeros and we have one clock for every clock pulse the output has to change and we have three outputs so it's a three bit counter so it is counting from zero to seven so read the current state if it is positive clock then check for the condition if is it clear yes make it as output as zero if not increment the value till the mod 8 because it's the three bit counter then so module counter k with the help of k statement we can observe clock clear output q input clock and clear are the input q is the output so since it's a three bit output two down to zero output is declared as registers so then we are assigning the initial value of the q because just to start because any value we can give so initial value of q is five what we are given that is one zero one so always at always positive edge of the clock check for the condition if clear is zero then perform the counter if clear is not zero if it is one then the output is zero so if clear is one output is zero if clear is zero what happens previously since it was five what happens from five it goes for the six then from six it goes to seven from seven it goes to zero this is what is the case statement we have written there okay because since we are studying the case statement we are using to <coughs> update the next state with the help of case statement okay so this is how we write the program for the counters we can analyze that with the help of waveforms here so you can observe initial value was five during positive edge it has changed to six next positive edge seven next was after seven it has to come to zero but clear has become so it has changed the value because it is before uh, in the during positive edge it has the value but now if you observe in this case what is happening the cl clear is changing but since it operates flip-flop operates only in the rising edge in the next rising edge it has become to zero till the next rising edge comes so clear has become zero and till this rising edge the clear is incrementing so what is happening clear is zero so from zero it is incrementing zero one two three four five like this so this is how we write the sequential program that is counter program with the help of a case statement okay if you have any questions go to the comment section write down your questions i will reply to your questions if you like my video subscribe to my channel click on the bell icon for further notification or and share with your friends for their benefits thank you